Hey everybody, so today we have this M1 MacBook Pro. It's in here. See, it's actually turning on. Um, something we actually did notice, if you actually look in the corner, bottom right corner here, see there's a little bit, uh, let me get a white screen because sometimes it doesn't really show too well. It's, so we have here, you can see it in the corner, see it's a little bit damaged. And if I probably put it at certain angles, you can probably see there's a little bit of like watermark or something. Yeah, especially even on that side where my finger is. See that? Some of the reflections there are really aren't showing so bad. So it looks like that there is some type of uh, maybe liquid damage or something. And then there's also a little bit of a crack on the side here. But it's not in here for that. It's in here for a repair because uh, for some reason, I can only imagine what the reason is. Okay, so it's in here because it's not really for more repair. It's in here. Well, it's in here for a repair. <laughs> That's it. So when you plug in the top one, uh, you can see the voltmeter is fine. You even heard the chime there. It looks to be pretty good. But when we plug in the bottom one, you get nothing. It's totally black. It's, it's dark there. So we need to do a replacement for this one. So what it kind of looks like is going on is maybe there's damage to the port itself there. That could be obviously because of some type of liquid. Maybe it's a little bit corroded in there. Maybe there's a problem as well. So what we need to be do, we need to just swap it out. It's actually a pretty easy swap. I actually did have it behind me here. It's one of these. These are USB-C ports. They actually do work on a lot of models. Uh, this is a USB-C port and it actually does work on a lot of models so they're like 1989, 2159 and even for the M1 MacBook Pro like this one's A2338 so we actually do a swap out for that and it should actually totally work totally fine so let's go ahead and test it and I'll show you guys how to do it, it's pretty easy now we saw that there the screen was a little bit damaged there so we don't really see if there's any other damage here as well um, looks to be pretty good so let's go ahead and remove this let's take out the battery connection you always want to be careful, it's very easy to damage that one and go ahead and see. So if I go under the microscope, so you see up this, all these lines, we have a bent tweezer. I could show you anyway, it's probably going to trigger some people. But see this, you can see there's a little bit of corrosion here, there's a little bit of liquid damage. Doesn't look to be too bad, necessarily. I mean, you could spend time cleaning it, trying to do a repair for them. But we want to kind of just really show, uh, especially if there's like a dirt and oil, sometimes these traces can be a little bit damaged here. You see the little black here? over it maybe that gets a little bit damaged and you keep using it to more wear and wear and tear and then eventually gets damaged further um, these ones at least are good because they're removable there's no point of putting so much work into it so much effort um, to actually fixing the trace lines I mean, you can still do that anyway you can fix them but that's usually more on like the a1708 models if you want to go check that out we actually show how to do full repairs of these ones but we just always want to show especially if there's any liquid damage what's going on for them but that's usually what you get you can even see the little uh, discoloration there and the little blue color towards the end there and that can give a problem as well but since this is such a popular model and it's very easy to actually get these ones um, we're just going to do a replacement C6 146A okay should be up. okay so we'll put this back in all right and then we're just going to be pretty much doing everything in reverse and then we can go ahead and test it now, we always like to take a look to see if there's any problem with the board in a normal situation right because uh, usually what happens is if there's any problem with charging period usually these can go bad pretty well these are the ICs that do regulate voltage and everything there but we're not having a problem with that we're not having a problem with turning on so and it doesn't really look to be any corrosion that's on the board here because that's usually the most important thing to worry about is if there's corrosion or there's other things causing that but usually because one port's working uh, that usually means that uh, the charging circuit's actually okay. If one of these goes bad, you actually have to make sure that both of them work um, for it to be charging at all. Usually you get like 5 volts, you'll see that typically, but not a typical charging issue like you saw there, where the one port's actually totally gone. So we're just going to go ahead and reverse now, and then uh, we'll finish up. Alright, so let's try it, each one. Heard that. Let's get 20 volts. Getting ampage charging. Let's go to the other port. All right, looks good. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on the A twenty three thirty eight M one MacBook Pro. This is the twenty twenty model, and um, if you're having a problem usually with one of the ports, this is a very rare instance where only the ports get get impacted. 
Um, obviously, just replacing this will actually take care of that. Mainly, if you're not getting a charge at either port, there is usually uh, there can still be a problem with this. This can be impacted as well as those ICs that I showed you a little bit earlier. Those usually do fail, or there could be another major short, especially if there's any type of liquid spill. This is one of those rare instances where there's liquid spill. It only impacts one area. It beelined right for this USB-C connection. So it's the luckiest and it's the best type of um, really repair because it's the safest one you can really have. So it's not going to be impacting anything else or possibly impacting data or anything else on the board there because everything's soldered to the board. And if something does go bad on these ones, you want to make sure you have a backup before something happens because anything happens, man, there's always a risk of data loss because everything is soldered to the board, the RAM, well, the, the RAM, CPU, GPU, um, especially the solid state drive is all solar to it. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys have been watching. If you did, please leave a like. really does help us out a lot. If you actually want to see the cool repair on actually doing the USB-C repair on this one, please go ahead and check that out. We have it on our channel. I'll also link it in the description if you guys want to go ahead and check that out as well. That's if you're stuck and you have to repair this and you can't have a removable one as easy as this one. But go ahead and check that out. Hope you guys enjoy watching. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.